video now today is a momentous day for me it's the day I get the keys to my first ever press car it's all thanks to Audi UK's enlightened digital media policy where people like me can get the keys to a car for a day make a video hopefully people like you will watch it Audi will get some coverage and everybody's happy I guess you could say it's a great example of Vorsprung der technique forward through technology now I did try getting an up GTI from Volkswagen earlier in the year and they said no so it's kind of ironic today that I'm getting a car from the complete other end of the Volkswagen Group performance car spectrum. I'm getting an Audi RS4, yeah, the brand new Audi RS4. Uh, I don't know if you know but I'm a big RS fan, I know my content's been very GTI heavy recently but I've owned uh, three myself personally and uh, two, that was two of the original model, one of the B7 models that's the second generation RS4. I haven't owned the third generation RS4 because I didn't really like the uh, automatic gearbox and the combination with the V8 and the press kind of reflected that as well so no great loss there but I'm hoping this new model will capture the best bits of the two earlier models so the engine of the first one was fantastic but the chassis wasn't so good and I particularly didn't particularly like the V8 in the B7 because you had to work it really hard to get anywhere and in a kind of RS model they should be a bit more effortless than that so this new model with its twin turbo V6 kind of similar to the one in the original model uh, a lot more efficient and uh, a bit more powerful should recapture those best bits so without any further ado I'm going to get myself down to Milton Keynes get the keys to this RS4 before they change their mind and I'll see you there shortly Okay, here I am finally with the brand new Audi RS4. Now, this is six months overdue because I should have originally driven this car in Spain at the international media launch, but Birmingham got covered in, with snow and I couldn't get to the airport. So I stayed at home making a snowman while everybody else was driving it around the hills in Malaga and having a brilliant time. Anyway, so this is long overdue, but the weather is playing ball. I'm actually in Silverstone right now, which is a fitting place to do this because the original B5 RS4 press launch was just over there. And uh, JK from Jamiroquai famously did some footage with the car and I think they lent him a car for a while afterwards as a brand ambassador so I'm hoping this car will recapture some of the magic of the B5 and also the B7 because the chassis was a lot better on the B7 but before we go driving it around these fantastic roads that go around here towards Brackley and uh, Toaster and actually back towards Milton Keynes where I picked up the car we'll just show you around the car and just show you what makes the B9 RS4 such a special car Okay, we've got a Misano Red RS4. This is an original RS4 colour back from 2000. They've used it throughout the range selectively in the meantime, and it looks stunning. It lends the car a presence that the more sombre colours like Navarro Blue just can't match. It is breathtaking. If you had a Ferrari in your garage next to this, as I'm sure some owners are lucky enough to do so, it would go very well indeed. Apart from the colour, you've got the flared wheel arches, which obviously give it presence. They are strangely quite subtle, and I'm just wondering if these plastic ducts that are really just trims kind of take away some of the effect of the flare of the arch because it just looks like the light goes to here and the arch is that when really the arch should go to the light so I'd love to see what this car would have looked like without those plastic ducts because it might have looked a little bit more aggressive but then I haven't got a standard A4 to compare it with and you can just see how it flares out from sort of here all the way around to here so that's quite a flare I think these cars are 15 centimeters wider than the RS5 sorry 15 millimeters wider but on each arch than the RS5 and 30 millimeters so three centimeters wider than the standard A4 so there again that's the extra width across there yeah you can really see it in the quarter just here 
it's not even smooth there it kind of comes out just more aggressively at this point and yeah it's a handsome looking car there's no doubt about it I didn't particularly like the B8 but this writes a lot of the wrongs with the B8 not least in the way it drives which we'll come to later so you've got the quattro lettering down there that came in with the uh, the current shape RS3 and RS6 and yeah looks really good they've dropped it off the grill now for some reason put it down on the on the silver trim I'm not a particularly big fan of the silver on this car and I would would prefer it to be in the gloss black now I know there's a carbon edition but that's 10 grand extra so I think it's a lot of money to pay just to get rid of the matte aluminium on this car uh, but if I had to then I'd probably consider that or just get this wrapped I just we didn't need silver on the original RS4 or the B7. I'm really not sure we need it now, but if that's what you want. We used to have silver mirrors though, I guess. That's kind of, that used to be all you'd get. I think it's all about showing that on a German autobahn that you are in an RS model and for the person to get out of your way. It's probably a big selling point over there, but over here, yeah, I think we're a little bit more subtle in our taste. Okay, this car, as you'd expect from a press car, is absolutely bristling with options. The first one I can show you are those 400 pound red brake calipers, which look great on this Misano red car. We've got 1,250s worth of uh, panoramic glass sunroof, and we've also got 1,200 pounds worth of sports exhaust, which I will be pleased to demonstrate to you later on. We've also got the Bang & Olufsen sound system, which is 750 pounds, I think some lighting goes on with these, maybe maybe not on this model, but it does on the R8. And there's things like full leather package. Storage pack. Advanced key, parking assistance. Uh, head up display, that's really useful actually. And a driver assistance pack. So quite a few bits and pieces on this car. I calculated the actual total amount of options on this car would have bought you an up GTI. So food for thought there. Okay guys, here we are inside the new RS4. So let's just have a look around what we've got here. So we've got the virtual cockpit, which came in with the TT, I think in around 2014. That's established now and it works really well. Unlike the TT, you've also got a nav screen in the center of the dash which is really useful because sometimes the passenger actually wants to do the navigation. So that's really kind of useful. Uh, we've got uh, automatic gearbox, of course. This is not S-Tronic, this is Tiptronic, and we'll go through that later when we do the driving. We've got uh, cruise control, paddle shift. We've got this touch sensitive climate control, which is a really nice touch. As is always the case with Audis, the interior is absolutely fantastic. This car was actually owned or driven by Gordon Shedden, the British touring car, multi-British touring car champion for a few months before today. And I bet after his Honda company cars, this was a completely different kettle of fish. It is a typical Audi high quality. You don't have to buy an RS4 to get this Audi quality interior. All the models are like this. It's just a bit sportier in these with this lovely textured aluminium actually reminds me of an R32 but let's not go there so yeah a lovely airy space it's got a lunar silver leather and these are called super sport seats I'm six foot and I'd say you could be a little bit taller than me maybe a little bit but for me at six foot they're absolutely perfect I suppose we better start the car up Okay, let's have a go with drive select. So let's put it into individual mode and let's just check what it's on. So you can choose whatever you want for the engine and the gearbox, the suspension, the steering, sport differential, engine noise and adaptive cruise control. So someone's had a play with this before, but yeah, I think actually it's pretty well set up. I did try it in comfort earlier and I found it a little bit soft. Auto was perfect, which for an Audi is quite unusual. Again, steering in comfort was a delight. Sport differential in dynamics, so it pushes as much to the back and splits it to the rear, so you'll end up with the rear driving. That's how you want it. Engine sound dynamic, well, we've got the sports exhaust, so we want to make the most of that. That's in dynamic and adaptive cruise control where we're not going to try that anyway. So I think it's set up to drive. So without any further ado, let's hit the road in this new Audi RS4. Ah. 
Okay guys, here we are behind the wheel of the new Audi RS4. It's taken me six months to get here. I'm not in Spain, I'm actually on the A422 between Brackley and Buckingham, but I'm really glad to finally be able to drive this car. Now, the reason I'm on this road is not because it's a particularly fast or scenic one, but because it's actually quite bumpy. And we know these RS4s are fast. All the people who drove them in Spain have told us that. They haven't actually told us how it'll handle a British B road. So we've got it uh, drive select in comfort mode. Everything's backed off and the car, considering the surface of the road, is actually quite comfy. It's not perfectly smooth like it's a magic carpet, but it's not harsh or crashy, and it doesn't really give you a headache or give you joggers nipple as like a, some of the sportier cars will. It's, a, it's perfectly comfortable. So that is good because the more tranquil the ride, shall we say, the more you can drive the car faster on roads like this, and these roads are everywhere in this country. They're not like this in Germany, by and large, but in the UK, some of the best roads actually don't have particularly brilliant surfaces, so that's great, because in individual mode, you can keep soft suspension, make everything else more aggressive, and you'd have a real tool for driving on the UK roads. So let's have a go with Drive Select. Right, so we've got engine and gearbox in dynamic, we've got suspension control in auto, so that'll look after itself. We've got steering in comfort, because actually it's just right like that anyway. Sport differential is aggressive in dynamic, and engine sound with this sports exhaust is dynamic. You can probably already hear it there. Warbling away. It's a bit different to the RS3s and their five-cylinder warble. It reminds me of an R32, but it's a hell of a lot qu quicker than an R32. And, um, it doesn't sound similar in that respect because it's actually so much faster. It goes through the gears much quicker than the R32. But it's got that lovely gargly rawness to it. It's a bit of hint of Porsche as well. Okay, let's set the record straight about the gearbox. This might not be S-Tronic, but it is bloody brilliant. This is the 8-speed ZF. It's used in lesser models throughout the range because of the torque limit of the S-Tronic isn't high enough for this stump-pulling engine. So I'll just... So we're in auto with the uh, gearbox, so we're not even in the most aggressive mode. How can you really complain about that? It just... be as smooth as the S-Tronic because there's a bit of a thump through the back as it engages the gear but I don't think that's actually a, that's actually a bad thing having a, some notification of when the gear is engaging is a, it makes it a bit closer to a manual it gives you a little bit more interaction I don't really want one big massive gush of power through the gears I want it to tell me you know to communicate and and it does that brilliantly Okay, let's just see if this car now can string it all together and give us the drive that we expect from an RS model for the first time in 10 years. So we're running in a auto suspension. It could be softer, but I think it's, it manages this road pretty well because it's dynamic, so it will, it will, it's adaptive, so it can change to the road. It's firm, but it needs to be firm to keep the body in control. It's doing a pretty good job. Uh, everything else is pretty much in aggressive, so gearbox, engine, engine noise. Yeah, just powering on there, you can feel the back sort of just encouraging you around the corner. I haven't talked much about the brakes, but there's just nothing to say, they seem to work really well, they're not ceramic. And that noise, can you ever get bored of that really? Shivers going down my back there. Incredible, incredible. It's not like a hot hatch. You can feel the stuff dealing with all the weight, like the DRC, and you know it's it's not as pure as a hot hatch. But considering the weight of this car, I don't know what it is. It's probably not far short of two tons, maybe 1800. It is pretty remarkable. 
Okay, well it's a bit childish, but I'm sure this is the bit you want, so I'm just going to brace myself. Uh, we're not going to put in launch control because I don't really believe in launch control. I think it's a bit harsh on the car, and even though it's a press car, we need to be respectful of it. So let's just give it some throttle. <laughs> You see, with the B5 RS4, that was the party trick. You could put people in the car and it would be like a roller coaster. You wouldn't need to go to a fairground anymore. You'd just do that a few times. And with this auto box, <laughs> it's even more head spinning the way it just goes through the, the ratios like that. And it's not as smooth as S-Tronic. There is a bit of a thump, but that actually even makes it even more exciting. So in the excitement stakes, this is the best RS4 by far. That is good fun. Okay guys, well sadly it's coming to the end of my day with the new Audi RS4. I've been driving it now for about five hours and the fact I'm not bored of it yet should tell you everything you need to know. All the changes made for this new model combined to make what is simply an incredible package. That engine is just phenomenal. I really would not worry about missing the V8 because this this car performs, you know, it doesn't just make noises, although it does make fantastic noises, a bit like an R32 on speed, it's just incredible. But this engine just does everything. It's got the torque, it's got the top end, it's got the economy and the CO2 emissions. The V8 was brilliant, but this is just in a completely different league. And then the chassis, well, again, similar changes have been made to the chassis. It's uh, comfortable when you want it to be. Comfort mode is actually almost too soft. Auto mode does a really good job, like, let's face it, it should do. And if the road's smooth and you're really in the mood, then, then a dynamic mode isn't, isn't ridiculous on UK roads. It's still actually very usable. But I don't think you need to, because auto is pretty well resolved most of the time. Anyway, so yeah, it can ride like a limo, or it can go probably around Silverstone like a super sports car. It is incredible there's only one word for it anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have give it a thumbs up and see you for the next one soon cheers